All right, in order to talk about the um, thermal and other transport properties for gases, the other thing that I need to introduce, if you haven't seen it already, um, is the concept of statistical distributions um, for velocity. Um, so if you have taken the section on statistical thermodynamics, then you may have already seen this, but um, I, I, I guess th this can just serve as a little refresher if you haven't seen this portion of it yet. Um, or don't recall it. Um, so there is, you know, from statistical thermodynamics, there's a set of rules that allows us to calculate um, the energy distribution of molecules um, based on the temperature and other conditions. Um, for gases, um, it typically, rather than talk about things quantum mechanically, we typically break this into, <clears throat> we talk about the states of gases in terms of what their velocity, gas velocities are. Um, and so there's a particular distribution called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution that applies here. And uh, let me just draw a coordinate axis to help make sure that some definitions are clear. So let me define a statistical distribution where um, the, the different states of a gas I'm going to refer to in terms of the gas velocities. So the gas, the velocity of a gas molecule can take on a wide range of values, right? Um, some of the gas molecules are moving close to zero meters a second. Some of them are moving at, you know, 3,000 meters a second. And some of them are moving at 10,000 meters a second as they vibrate around randomly. But, you know, even though they all, they can statistically move at different speeds, there is sort of, there are averages and standard deviations to their movement that sort of fall out of statistical thermodynamics. Um, so if I draw a phase space that refers to um, the, the, vo the velocity of a particular, you know, range of molecules. Um, so let me talk about, you know, what is the, no what is the number of atoms um, that has velocity between, you know, whatever, you know, this number is. Uh, so there's a particular Vx, Vy, Vz state here. Um, and let me call the size of that box dvz, you know, dvx with a depth dvy. So essentially the number of molecules that fall into this little box that's located at Vx, Vy, Vz divided by the total number of atoms, let's say in a room full of gas, um, would have to follow the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, which is m divided by 2 pi kbt to the 3 halves e to the minus mv squared over kbt or 2 kbt actually times dvx dvy dvz you know so this basically represents a probability distribution where the distribution is written in terms of the velocities. So that whole distribution, so by the way, this prefactor here is basically designed so that when I integrate over this thing, it produces the number one because the, uh, the gas has to be in some kind of state. So that's basically how you determine what that prefactor is. And then, you know, if you look at the thing if you look at the thing that sits up here, what it represents is the ratio of the kinetic energy of a gas molecule. That's the kinetic energy of a gas molecule relative to KBT. And you'll recognize the E to the minus energy divided by KBT as the weighting factor that appears for all statistical thermodynamics distributions. But um, anyway, so this is a statistical distribution that you know governs um, the distribution of velocities in a gas. And uh, just to be 100% clear about this, V squared that's written up there um, is defined as Vx squared plus Vy squared plus Vz squared. So the it represents the speed, essentially. Um, okay, so um, a typical way that we'll use this um, will be to convert it into polar coordinates. Um, so I will define my polar coordinates in this way. Um, and then that would mean that, oops, sorry, that's not V. 
one second. This is V. Um, so if I define my polar coordinate or my spherical pol polar coordinates in that way, um, I can rewrite this as, so this is in V theta phi coordinates. I can rewrite that as m over 2 pi kbt to the 3 halves times e to the minus mv squared over 2 kbt times the factor that comes out when you change from change coordinate systems. So that would be v squared sine phi uh, d phi d theta dv. Okay, so n now I'm going to talk about some things that are related to the speed. So, so the, the advantage of, of switching to spherical coordinates The advantage to switching to spherical coordinates is that now we can talk about the molecular speed and not like speed as in I'm no longer individually talking about Vx, Vy, and Vz. Now I'm just concerned about the speed of a molecule. Um, so I, I can now talk about the probability that a molecule has a particular speed. Um, so let me define uh, another probability distribution, which is the probability that a molecule has a particular speed v. So I'll define that as um, you know the, the probability that uh, you know the particle has any particular phi and theta oops but it has to have a particular vz uh, sorry speed um, and in that case basically all I need to do is take the thing up here and uh, integrate it over all values of you know psi and integrate it over or, yeah, phi and integrate it over all possible values of theta this is the m over whatever this was times e to the minus mv squared over 2 kbt v squared and then I guess I should put a sine theta, sine phi in here. If I if I do that integration, sorry, sine phi. Um, if I do that integration, I should get um, four pi. So four pi is the solid angle that gets formed times m over two pi kbt to the three halves times e to the minus mv squared over two kbt times v squared. So this is the probability of molecule being between speed v and v plus delta v. All right, so let's plot that. Let me, let me just, uh, you know, I'm going to bring up a new, a new, well, okay, let me go back here. So let me just take a look really fast at what this thing looks like, right? So um, I'm going to plot, here's what I'm going to do on the next slide. So I'd like to be able to plot the probability distribution versus the velocity. So the question is, you know, like, what is the most likely speed and what, like, you know, essentially what does the shape of this thing look like? Um, is it likely that there are things with zero speed? Is it unlikely? Is it, you know, is there a particular speed that's most likely? Um, when do things become unlikely? Uh, stuff like that. Okay, so let's let's just take a little look at this function. So basically the only parts that depend on the velocity itself are this term that's an exponential term and this term which is a quadratic term. Um, so, you know, this thing, you know, at near v equals zero basically behaves like zero, or sorry, it behaves like a, um, 
a one, right? So for v, for v close to zero, this whole thing basically behaves like a one, and this thing is doing the variation, right? So what I know is that initially this thing basically behaves like a quadratic, right? So there's a there's a portion for small v that behaves like a quadratic, and then for larger velocities, the portion that matters most. Um, is not this term, but the exponential term. So there's a there's another term that basically looks like this. That's the exponential term that behaves like um, e to the minus m v squared over you know two kbt or whatever. And so you know basically what happens is when you connect these two things, the intermediate behavior looks like this. So let me, let me break that onto a new slide so that it looks a little bit more clear. So if I look at the probability of a particle having a particular velocity, there's actually a peak value, right? So there's a There's a peak value where it's most probable um, to, to have a velocity. And it's actually not too hard to figure out what that number is, right? So the most probable point you can figure out by taking df dv and setting that equal to zero. I'll call that the v, the most probable. And if you go ahead and solve, like if you take the Maxwell-Boltzmann equation and, and the equation, you know, if I take this equation and I differentiate it with respect to v and set that equal to zero, you can solve. And what you'll find is that the most probable speed is square root 2 times kBT over the mass of the gas molecule. Um, you can ask the question a little bit differently. Cause, so that's actually the most probable value, but it's not actually the average value, right? So the average value would be defined a little bit differently. Um, so the average value, or the average speed anyway, so the, this is really a speed, not a velocity vector. The average speed would be defined as the integral over the statistical distribution of the weight with the velocity, and you'll get a different number if you do that, right? So if I if I take the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution and I do that integration, I'll get eight pi over um, kBT over m. But still, like no matter what you do, like whether I get two, you know, whether the prefactor is um, two or whether you get eight over pi. So what is eight over pi? That's eight over three and some change. That's guess what? Pretty close to two. Um, and the uh, the other thing that actually turns out to be very like this actually turns up to come up in our transport calculations is the RMS speed. So so that's the root mean square average speed, which is defined as the square root of the average of v squared. And if you do that, you'll get a slightly different number. Um, this one turns out to be a little larger because um, basically when you weight the square, the tail matters a little bit more. So the average speed gets a little bit higher because there is a tail. Um, so that is important. Uh, let's see here. V squared. So why is this arm like I, I'm writing this RMS speed and sort of implying that it's important, but it might not be all that clear why that's such an important quantity. Um, well, let me just motivate it by saying that, like, for example, let me think about what's the average energy of a molecule. Sorry, there's a fire engine behind me. So what's the average energy of a molecule, right? Let me just define that. 
Well, in order to do that, what I would have to do is I would have to, so like I would have to integrate, like what's the average half MV squared, right? That would be the, the this would basically represent the kinetic energy of a molecule. Um, and then I would have to take the average, you know, I would have to statistically weight that over the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Well, guess what? That's half M times 3 kBT over M, right? So this is our RMS. Showed up right there. And in fact, that means that the average energy of a molecule is 3 halves kBT. Um, and if... Um, you know anything about the equipetition theorem, you might, like from our statistical thermodynamics discussion, you might have guessed that, um, but it comes right out of the, um, the math, um, very simply. So, you know, basically that came out of, you know, having the RMS velocity handy. Okay, so um, I think I've talked enough about the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution and its various uses, so um, let's move on and apply it to calculating some transport properties.